Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Colinati. Today I am reviewing a nonfiction science book, Knocking on Heaven's Door by Lisa Randall. The subtitle of this book is How Physics and Scientific Thinking Illuminate the Universe and the Modern World. This book is excellent, but I am going to start off my review by saying that, in my opinion, the title and the subtitle of this book bear no resemblance to the meat of the book itself. Randall herself states that the main concepts of this book are scale, uncertainty, creativity, and rational critical thinking, which I would agree that's definitely what parts of this book are about, but if you are not interested in particle physics or the massively cool Large Hadron Collider, this book probably isn't for you. For me, a large majority of this book was the explanation of particle physics as it was understood in 2011, and then a fascinating part about the Large Hadron Collider. Because this is nonfiction, I don't think spoilers apply necessarily. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I do want to kind of outline uh, the major sections of this book to give you an idea of what is actually talked about. Parts 1 and 2 cover understanding scales of energy and scales of matter and why those are important while doing scientific research and thinking about science in general. Parts 3 and 4 constitute, for me, the majority of this book. It is an excellent synopsis of the history, construction, and workings of the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. Uh, Randall explains what colliders are and how they work. Randall goes into great detail explaining how the LHC will actually detect particle collisions and how it will detect, hopefully, cross your fingers, uh, new exotic particles that are so far unknown to us. This section of the book also has what might seem to be a lot of tangents to explain the standard model of particle physics, covering things that you probably didn't learn in school about atomic structure, going deep down into the smallest scales of, you know, up, down, bottom, top, strange, charm, quarks, gluons, muons, taus, things like that that you don't really hear about that much. and. While it might seem like a tangent, it's actually quite important to understanding why the LHC matters. The LHC is probably, I think it's stated in here, at the time of the, of the writing of this at least, it is the largest like scientific technological experiment ever constructed by humanity. It's massive. I had no idea it was that much of an achievement, and it is poised because of its size, the size of its ring, and uh, that it can collide protons to create the unknown particles that will prove or disprove a large number of theories and models. That leads us to part five, in which Randall leads us up from the smallest scale, particle physics, to the largest scale that we study, which is cosmology. Randall is actually an expert in both of these scales, as far apart as they may seem, they actually come together at the end of this book. I was wondering, with only a couple chapters left in the book, what Randall was really going to talk about, where cosmology is concerned. I know quite a lot of the basics of cosmology because Neil deGrasse Tyson exists, but it turns out that that discussion is really about the unknowns of dark energy and dark matter, and those two things constitute all but 4% of the matter energy in the universe. Interestingly enough, if dark energy and dark matter have the properties that theorists surmise it does in order to fit in with how we know the universe works, it should be be have constituent parts that are particles, basically. And this is where we come back to the LHC. Once again, because of the LHC's size and what it is doing there, what the kind of particles that it can create, it is very likely that if we are ever to find evidence of dark energy, dark matter particles, it will be at the LHC. So yes, we come full circle from the smallest to the largest and then back down to the smallest. That is really the gist of this book. I think that nonfiction books are generally uh, rated based on how engaged and interested you are in with a topic and how well you understand the subject matter. And for this particular book, I would highly rate it. I really understood what Randall was writing about. Uh, it just it made a lot of sense to me. I was very much interested in the topic the whole way through. I don't think that Randall's writing style is sublime by any means. 
um, but she is an expert. She speaks and she writes with authority. She doesn't have that easy readable quality of a Neil deGrasse Tyson book, for example, but then you have to pull back and realize this is an intermediate level science book. It's not a beginner's level book. It's definitely aimed at people who already have some interest and understanding of basic physics and cosmology. I highly recommend this book to anyone who is looking to go beyond popular science beginner's level books. If you are interested in particle physics, if you're interested in the Large Hadron Collider, definitely check this book out. Now, as a, a final caveat, this book was published in 2011 when the LHC had only been online for about two years and had not been powered up to its full capacity. So. Uh, there are, uh, Randall goes into a lot of explanation of the experiments that they hope to perform at the LHC when it is definitely at its peak, which I think happened in 2013 or 2014, especially, you know, the search for the Higgs boson. Randall has written a follow-up, a very short 100 page or so piece on the discovery of the Higgs boson and the results of LHC experiments, and that is probably going to be the next thing I pick up by her because I am sure it is going to be very interesting. That was my review of Knocking on Heaven's Door by Lisa Randall, also known as Why the LHC is Totally Cool. If you're interested in more reviews of nonfiction books, uh, non-memoir books, please let me know. I do really enjoy reading nonfiction books about scientific topics, but I'm not really sure how much that appeals to people on BookTube. I don't see a lot of people doing reviews of nonfiction books that aren't memoirs, so I'm not sure if there's really an audience for that, but if you were interested, please let me know. If you want to discuss this book, please comment down below. That is it for me, and thank you guys very much for watching. I will be back with another video soon. Bye.